Hello everyone, Parallel here, and welcome to Blade and Soul. And man, there have been a lot of major game-changing announcements recently in Blade and Soul. So I wanted to make this video to cover a few things and some of the upcoming changes, but also to give a little bit of a PSA here regarding the weapon upgrade paths, because the um, NCSoft uh, Community Manager just released some pretty important information on the forums regarding that. And it's a pretty good change, so I wanted to mention that uh, here in a video. So first things first, they just, I mean, NCSoft just announced, I mean, within a matter of days, that the expansion, the level 50 expansion was going to be coming out. The expansion is called the uh, Silver Frost Mountains. And everyone thought this was, you know, several weeks away or maybe even a month away, or and they hadn't really announced the date. All of a sudden they come out and say, bam, it's going to come out next week or on March 23rd which at the time of this recording is actually tomorrow. And so it's very, very little advanced warning here. And, uh, and because of that, it was creating quite a stir in the community. A lot of people were trying to farm to prepare for the, uh, you know, prepare their weapons and upgrades for the expansion. And because, uh, you know, uh, the weapon upgrades will be increasing through the expansion up to level 50 and Basically, the way it worked is that if you were upgraded all the way to true pirate weapons, you would be on a much better upgrade path come the expansion. At least that's what the common perception was. Now, let's turn the UI back on here. But the, the community manager just made an announcement on the forums that they are actually adjusting how the weapon upgrade paths are going to work in the expansion. And I wanted to mention this because I've actually seen a lot of people... Um, there's a lot of videos out there, you know, regarding Silver Frost Mountains and the upgrade path, and just just very recently, a lot of those are probably no longer accurate because of the, the because of these changes. So what the change is now, as you can see here, I'm on my warlock, and I just barely was able to make 45 before I just made it yesterday. So just made it just in time for the leveling event and just in time for the expansion, and I haven't had time to gear up or do much of anything, but. The way the expand, the way the uh, the new upgrade path is going to work, is now apparently when you get to true profane, which is my next upgrade. Once you get to true profane, and you are then going to upgrade to the next stage, which is awakened siren, you will you will have a choice. And I'm actually not quite sure how this is going to work. So reading over the post, it says the. Instead of, you know, normally you go True Profane to Awakened Siren, and then True Siren, and then Awakened Pirate, and then True Pirate. And they're going to modify that so that when you go from True Profane to the next upgrade, you will be able to select either going to Awakened Siren or Oathbreaker. Now, Oathbreaker is the new uh, upgrade path in the expansion. So you can get a jump start right into Oathbreaker. And hopefully, you know, if the material costs are low, this will be a huge, huge benefit to anyone who hasn't been upgraded all the way to uh, True Pirate. How this choice works, I'm not sure. Uh, see, I have the upgrade, you know, window up here. I'm not sure how it will work. How do you choose whether you want to go to Awaken Siren or to Oathbreaker? And I'm guess what I'm, I'm guessing what I'm kind of hypothesizing. I haven't seen any screenshots or anything of it, but. Maybe if you, it just depends on what, you know, item you put here to upgrade. So if you put the Oathbreaker upgrade item here, it will upgrade to Oathbreaker. Or if you put the, um, what is it, the, the uh, is it the Blightstone? I can't remember what the upgrade is from True Profane, but when you, or if you put that weapon here, well, then it choose, you know, to go to, to uh, Awaken Siren. So... We'll have to see how that works, but overall, this is an excellent, excellent change. And it even goes a little further to say if you're already on Awakened Siren, so if you're already in a Siren weapon path, your new progression will go from, once you go from True Siren, you'll have the choice then, when you upgrade your True Siren, you'll be able to go to True Oathbreaker or to Awakened Pirate. So you'll have a choice there as well. And if you're already at True Pirate, that's fine. You'll just go right from there to 
it says to true breeze so and true breeze is after the oathbreaker so you still get you know you still get a jump start there but this this method seems so much better because it will it will allow players who haven't upgraded to pirate yet uh, a much smoother upgrade path I mean it was really it was really looking bad I mean the the old upgrade path would have been horrendous to try to do you know while you're leveling from 45 to 50 I mean who's going to want to stay 45 and try to upgrade to troop pirate you know to go through or who or either you'd either have to do that or you'd be stuck with true profane all the way from 45 to 50 which is also not a great option so th this this change really I think will help a lot for any player who was not already maxed out and even if players who are maxed out, if you were thinking about loving an alt or anything like that, again, this will be a much, much better, much smoother upgrade path. So this is an excellent change. Uh, kudos to NCSoft for making this change and uh, getting that through. So yeah, just a little bit of a PSA there, just to be aware that basically the long and short of it is you're not screwed over if you don't have True Pirate. Simple as that. If you're running around with True Profane, you, stay, you have a much better upgrade path now when, on your way to 50. So that's mostly what I wanted to cover, and uh, just quickly here before I sign off for the video, I did want to show a few things since I did get level 45 on my Warlock, and the last video I did with my Warlock, it was actually, she was still level 10, so I thought I'd show a few things that, uh, a few more abilities and uh, a few upgrades that you get along the way and show off, uh, in particular, the um, uh, some of the cool uh, spells that you get right at 45, and in particular... What I wanted to show was one of the main reasons to choose a warlock or why warlocks are wanted in groups, and that is the ability Soul Burn. And you, you don't even get this until level 45, which, you know, like I said, I only got yesterday, so I've only had a few, little bit of time to play around with this ability. But it is very, very good. So let's um, let's bring it up here. Now this is an upgrade to your Obliterate ability, and basically what it does, it's it's a team-wide buff. And it has, I believe, what is it, two minute? Oh, three minute cooldown. So it's got a three minute cooldown. It's a team wide buff. And what it does is when you, it sacrifices your summoned pet, regardless of how much time is left, it will sacrifice your pet. And it gives you an amazing uh, team buff. It gives you, you can see here, it gives you, uh, it resets the cooldown of all your skills when you cast it. It uh, recovers 10 focus. It gives you uh, increased critical damage by 50% during the buff and increases movement speed by 20% during the buff and what even else it does and a pretty cool thing and you can see here the buff lasts for 15 seconds but what it does is it gives you your awakened skills and basically this affects each class a little bit differently if you look through your uh, skill tree you'll be able to see what your awakened skills are and you can see for warlocks it's right here it's awakened to rupture um, and Awaken Rupture is pretty cool. On top of what Rupture normally does, it does basically a lot more, or significantly more damage. It gives you a long, much longer targets for four seconds, which is very nice. Uh, so you can spam out your, um, you can spam out your uh, bombardments if you're using that spec. Um, but uh, on top of that, it gives you, you know, uh, six focus for two seconds upon a critical hit, and you know reduces the dra cooldown of Dragon Call. If you're using Dragon, uh, you know Dragon Call on the non uh, Dragon Helix build, that would be helpful. And so it just gives you a nice, you know, uh, upgrade over the normal Rupture. And the, you know, each class you'll have to go through in your uh, skill tree, and you'll see you have to see what your awakened skill is. But you get that skill for the basically for the 15 seconds while Soul Burn is up. So yeah, that's a pretty incredible buff. Huge crit damage bonus, awakened skill usage, increased movement, um, a reset of cooldown, and a uh, um, uh, you know, a nice chunk of focus as well, 10 focus there. Although as a warlock, you don't have that many focus problems thanks to your uh, mantra. But uh, So that's really cool. But on top of all the actual amazing effects, it has one other thing that is actually really cool that I didn't know about. Uh, that was actually part of the buff. So what it actually does is it changes your the look of your character. It actually basically overwrites your current costume that you're wearing and it gives you a new one that looks 
really, really neat. It, it's, it's a pretty fantastic looking outfit for the 15 seconds while you have the buff up. So let's go ahead and show what that looks like here. So let's summon up my Thrall here. And there he is. And what I'm going to do is, let's see if I can show this as best I can here. If I hide the UI, now you press, once your, well, your summon pet is out, you just press tab again to do soul burn. And boom, there you go. And that is the soul burn outfit. That is really cool looking. Really cool looking wings, kind of a cool devilish looking armor. And there you go. And when it fades away, it kind of like uh, bats go flying away. So that's a really neat graphical effect. One of the coolest things about Warlock for sure. So yep, so that's Soulburn. Um, the buff is amazing. That's mostly why Warlocks are wanted in group. And it's something you can look forward to once you get level 45. Now that said, I have found um, I might do another you know video here like on my build and stuff. I was planning to I was hoping to have more time to actually work on my warlock, but with the expansion coming out, you know that kind of throws the you know throws a wrench in that plan. So you know the next the next few days weeks here I'll be leveling up to fifty. I'm actually not sure how long it takes. So so there's that. But um, I mean I was gonna stop and do some Muchen's Tower and maybe make some videos there, but but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I have been pretty happy with Warlock. It's definitely a very high DPS class. And yeah, at this point at level 45, I think my largest uh, complaint or the biggest downfall of the class is just its lack of mobility. Even with the Dragon Helix spec, which helps quite a bit with the mobility, you still have to stand still for several things. I mean, you still have to stand still to summon your pet. You still have to stand still when you cast your Wingstorm, which is the big thing when it's not on its instant cast you do. And also you have to stand still for Imprison, which you need to do to reset your Wingstorm. So it still has quite a bit of, you know, quite a bit of the lack of mobility in it. But, um, but there it is. It still is a very, very high DPS class, and I like it a lot. So, all right, so that's all, everyone. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover. Just give a little bit of an update on my Warlock there and show off the very cool Soul Burn buff. And... Uh, and, uh, and then also just discuss the uh, Silver Frost Mountains expansion that's coming out very soon. Honestly, by the time this, this video is uploaded, it will probably already be the 23rd by the time you're watching this video. So Silver Frost will probably be out even as you're watching this video. But uh, yeah, and the big thing there is just remember that they have, NCSoft has actually improved the weapon upgrade path. So you don't have to worry about being screwed over if you don't have true pirate. Yeah. So that's a very, very good thing. Now, as you can see, the soul burn buff is uh, coming up in another few seconds here. So maybe I'll do it one more time and, uh, and sign off after that. Now, one thing is when you summon your pet, you don't have to soul burn right away. You can, even if your pet just has like one second left, you know, you can soul burn then and you're fine. It just, whatever the remaining duration is, is what it will, uh, you know, what it will take away. All right, so let's do it. So there it is. Very cool. It has kind of a glowing crystal in the back. It's got the cool wings. Just a very cool looking outfit. This would be pretty amazing if they just added this outfit to like the, uh, to the cash shop or something. Wouldn't that be pretty cool? Or like a warlock exclusive outfit that you could just wear. That would be pretty neat. They definitely put a lot of effort into that costume, so I'm sure it would sell or make them some money if they did add it to the store. All right, everyone, so that is it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the uh, Silver Frost Mountain expansion that's coming out tomorrow. I know I will be checking it out for sure, and yeah, I'll be making some videos on it. Um, very anxious to see how the leveling to 45 will be, and... Uh -huh. And even getting Warlock to 50, which uh, here does make a pretty big difference in a lot of classes. A lot, there was a lot of class balancing that happens between 45 and 50, and uh, we'll have to see how everything shakes out. All right, everyone, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.